It's been over a year since the last time I raced. Since the last time I put on a racing bib, put those racing shoes on and tested myself out there. I've worn a lot of outfits since then, but I haven't put a race bib back on. I've worn this, this one too, this one. I've done a little bit of this from time to time. I've even looked at wearing this, but I can't quite bring myself around to wearing it. I'd probably get divorced. Since it's dropped to below 20 degrees, plenty of this kind of stuff. Far more comfortable for me now. So a huge amount has changed uh, over the last year in my life and around the world since the last time I strapped on the running shoes, the racing shoes, put that bib on and tested myself out there. So this episode is all about racing, why you've got to get out there and race more, why I have to get out there and race more. So let's roll those intros and let's get this episode started. Hi guys and girls from around the world, welcome to episode two of Why I Run TV. Hopefully this last week you've got in some good training or some good racing and maybe even put a couple of those hills in that we talked about with Adzi in our first episode. This week it's all about racing. It's about racing as much as you can and we're going to look at the positives and the negatives of racing. Also unpack a couple of those reasons why people don't race um, and maybe give you a few ideas as to what you can do to uh, get a few more races under your belt before that big a race or grand final race day it comes around. Already packing, come with me. I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. So yesterday, for the first time in over a year, I entered a race. I put the bib on. I turned up and I tested myself over five kilometers, and I tell you what, an amazing experience. And while I was there, I tried to catch up with a few people, some people that I knew, some people that I didn't, and just talk to them about why racing is such an important part of their life as a runner, um, why they value it, and what they hope to achieve on race day. Racing is important to me because I get to test myself. Um, it brings all the training that I've done all to the forefront. It's about partaking and yeah. enjoyment. Why is that? And getting Dave out of bed at uh, 5 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Yeah, what gets you out of bed to race? Me. At a day like this. <laughs> <laughs> What's it all about for you? Oh, it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah and crossing the line is the bit that you look forward to. Yeah. What's racing for me? Racing against people that I respect and admire and cheering those on at the end of the day that just want to finish his medal and have an awesome time out there. Yeah, so racing is a huge part of our running life. You know, it's, it's what we actually train for. But a lot of people don't do it. A lot of people don't do it enough and I've had plenty of coaches in my past who have emphasised the importance of racing and to race as often as we can. When I think back to my high school days, my coach Mr Tucker who was a cross country coach for me, he had us racing every single week in the lead up to our big championship day. We'd hop on a bus on a Friday afternoon, we'd go out to one of our our schools and our, and our school competition and we'd race over three or four or six or eight K cross country. So we were getting race ready every single week and it was the best training that we could, uh, we could possibly get. And you know, as an adult now, I just don't seem to be racing enough. I just don't seem to be putting myself out there as much as I should. So uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about racing and why it's important. Also look at some of the reasons why I don't race and maybe that's the same for you and um, offer a couple of suggestions as how we can get around that. So look, racing is an amazing experience and I think every single one of us love it. We love it when we're there, but often we don't put ourselves in that position quite as much. So look, the second reason why I think we should get into more racing is because it's the best possible training session that we could give ourselves. On race day, we seem to push ourselves just that little bit harder. We seem to put ourselves in that hurt box just a little bit deeper. And I think we would do that more than we would ever do in a training session. Now another really big reason why I think we should get out there racing is just the energy and the lift that you feel when you're there on race day. When you put that bib on, you seem to grow taller, you seem to get stronger and get faster. You've got family and friends around, you can hang around afterwards and catch up with your running mates. Also one of the beautiful things about race day is it really gives us a chance to put into practice those things that we're going to try come that big grand final day. Come that big A race, we're gonna try some things, whether it's nutrition or gels, or whether it's when we kick late in the race or how we go out in those first few kilometers. We can really try these things without having to worry too much about 
whether they succeed or whether they fail. Because either way, if they succeed or fail, you're gonna get so much information and you're gonna get some, such a big learning curve that you can implement on that big day and hopefully get the benefits from all those races that you've done in the lead up to it. You know, one of the great things as well about that race day is that sometimes that shiny medal at the end or that great certificate or maybe a winner's prize or something like that, those little medals that you get, you can put them up somewhere in your house and you can look at it for the next couple of weeks and just give you that bit of motivation to kick you through, particularly as you get closer and closer to that big race day, the big A race. Okay, but there's lots of reasons. There's a huge amount of reasons why people don't actually race a lot. And I think for me as a runner, the first one is basically just fear. I've got out of the habit of racing. I've got out of the habit of turning up every week or every second week and pushing myself hard. And I found myself in a comfortable zone. I can go out and train, I can keep myself in a comfortable zone and not have to worry too much about it. Yeah, and I guess one of the other big reasons why people don't race a huge amount now and quite honestly, I agree with it, is the cost of sometimes these races, you know. So look, I get it, and I agree with a lot of people when they say it's just too expensive to do races all the time. Uh, because if you're doing five or six or 10 races, you know, if they're all 40 or $50, or sometimes even higher than that, up to $100, that's an expensive amount that you can put out there, particularly if you can just go and train in a, in a replacement for it. So the expense of racing, the cost of racing, uh, definitely is a negative and it's definitely something which has held me back. I know it's held a lot of my training partners back and I know it would have held a lot of you guys back at home from entering those races in preparation. So I've been thinking a little bit recently about how I can overcome those two big factors for me. One, the cost of racing regularly and two, that idea that I'm a little bit fearful, I'm a little bit scared about putting myself out there in those races. So the second one, look, to be honest, it's going to take care of itself once I do make the decision to race regularly and look I did that yesterday in, my, in a local 5k race and I'll do that next weekend and hopefully as week by week goes I'll just get more and more confident. The first problem, the, the idea that it costs too much money is definitely a relevant one but I think as runners there is a lot of ways that we can get around that. First and foremost is park run. I think we've got to try and put ourselves out there not as, as a training run but really prepare ourselves for that park run as if it was a proper race. Pretend that we spent 40 bucks on the entry, pretend that we've got that race bib on and go out there and race it hard and put ourselves in a real race environment. That's one way that I think we can do it. Another way that I think we can cut the cost down of racing is uh, by setting ourselves some time trial courses around our own local neighborhood. If I think back to when I was again in high school, um, when my brother who was five years older than me would, would have a, a couple of circuits around our house, sometimes 3K, 5K, 6, 7K, and on the back of the wardrobe we'd record the times and we'd kind of have like a bit of a leaderboard. And I knew that if I went out and ran this 3K circuit really hard and treated it like a race, I'd come back. You know, if it, if it put me in second or third on our little family leaderboard, I'd rub the names out and I'd put my own name there where it needed to be. Um, and I've started to do that myself. I've got a nice little three and a half K circuit around my local suburb where I live here on the Gold Coast. And I'm timing myself every couple of weeks and treating it like a race, warming up, doing the same warm ups, and having a real good crack at it and putting myself in a race situation for free of cost. I can do it any day that I want, but it's certainly beneficial. So there we go guys for episode two. Thanks very much for joining us. Hopefully it's motivated you to get out there and enter one of your local races. If you have, tell us all about it in the comments below. We'd love to hear about it and uh, hopefully it gives you a bit of confidence in the lead up to your big A race or your championship day in the coming months. Hopefully we'll see you next week as well for episode three on Wire Run TV. Have a great training week. Enjoy your racing uh, and enjoy those rest days as well. Cheers.